Hi, I'm Mark from ACLS Certification Institute. And in today's Mega Code review, we're going to cover narrow complex irregular tachycardias because the treatment is different than that of regular narrow complex tachycardias. Now, quick review what makes a narrow complex tachycardia a narrow complex tachycardia? Well, we're looking at the width of the QRS complex. The width of the QRS should be less than 0.12 seconds. If it's 0.12 seconds or less, it's considered a narrow complex tachycardia. If the QRS is wider than 0.12 seconds, I'm going to call that a wide complex tachycardia, and we'll cover that a little later. Sometimes it's difficult to discern a regular from an irregular tachycardia. What you're looking for is a regularity in the morphology, the shape of the waveform. What is the appearance of this EKG? Look at the R waves. The R waves march out. Are they an equal distance from each other? And is this equal distance maintained and consistent throughout the run of the rhythm? If the morphology, if the appearance starts to change throughout the run of the same rhythm, well, that means there's different parts of the heart generating that impulse, causing that different uh, shape in the waveform. That's a polymorphic tachycardia and the treatments vary a little bit from regular. One of the most common causes of a narrow complex irregular tachycardia is an underlying atrial fibrillation. Now in atrial fibrillation, the atrial chambers aren't fully contracting. They're not fully ejecting all the blood out of those chambers. In atrial fibrillation, the atrial chambers are just quivering. So blood tends to accumulate inside those chambers. And you have blood pooling inside the atrial chambers because that's not being fully ejected. The risk is that clots can start to form inside this pooled blood. Now, any patient who's been in atrial fibrillation longer than 48 hours before they present to you and is stable probably shouldn't be cardioverted right away. Again, the risk is they can throw a clot. It's been longer than 48 hours. The risk of a clot forming in the atrial chamber increases. Now we convert them to a sinus rhythm, fully eject that blood and that clot out of the chamber. A patient runs the risk of a stroke or another event. In AFib with RVR, a rapid ventricular response, we may not necessarily want to convert this AFib to a sinus rhythm for other reasons, minimizing the risk of a clot and so on, but we want to get control of the ventricular response. The ventricular rate is way too fast. That's the problem. So with an AFib with RVR, we want to focus on rate control, ventricular rate control. So one of the big differences between narrow complex regular and narrow complex irregular tachycardias is the drug of choice. Our drug options change. Remember, for a narrow complex SVT, our drug of choice is adenosine. You really don't want to use adenosine in irregular complex arrhythmias. Has it been used before? Absolutely. Did the patient die? No. I had a student come to me the other day and go, Mark, Mark, look what I did. And he hands me a strip of a patient he had that he had converted with adenosine. Well, after the conversion, I could see that the patient was in an underlying atrial fibrillation. Did the patient die? No. Is the denosine indicated for an AFib with RVR? No. Does it happen? Absolutely. Did the patient die? Of course not. However, it's not indicated and generally shouldn't be used in irregular rhythms. So the drug of choice for a narrow complex irregular tachycardia? A calcium channel blocker. A couple options exist. One is verapamil. 5 milligrams. Slow IV push over 5 minutes. Some literature says over 2 minutes. 5 over 5 is how I remember it. Second drug, cardizone, 0.25 milligrams per kilogram, again over two to five minutes. Both of these drugs are calcium channel blockers and are designed to help slow the ventricular response in these tachycardias. Now, any narrow complex tachycardia, whether it's regular or irregular, doesn't matter. If the patient is showing serious signs of shock, low blood pressure, poor color, altered mental status, immediate synchronized cardioversion. Again, whether the complex is narrow, uh, regular or irregular, a patient with serious signs of shock with this tachycardia is going to receive immediate synchronized cardioversion. Now, there is little difference in the amount of energy they recommend between regular and irregular narrow complex tachycardias. For a narrow complex regular tachycardia, the literature is suggesting start around 50 joules. Synchronized cardioverdum at 50 joules. If the narrow complex tachycardia is irregular, so like an AFib with RVR, they recommend bumping the joules up to about 200 joules. 
So an AFib with RVR, synchronized cardio version at 200 joules. Now the topic always comes up of sedation. Let's say you have a, a narrow complex tachycardia, patient's hemodynamically unstable, blood pressure's in the 80s, they look a little funky to you, but they're still with it, they're still talking to you. You know, you're coming at them with the paddles and they're going, ah, you, know, you may want to give them a little sedation. However, never withhold emergent cardio version uh, for a truly unstable patient to administer sedation. If you can get it into them quick, fantastic. Give them a little groove okay, make them feel a little better. If not, shock them. So let's get into our mega code review of narrow complex to irregular tachycardias. Today we're working pre-hospital. We're back in the ambulance, so let's get started. Hey Dan, barely get a donut. Ambulance 158, respond to a call 153 Turnberry for a female with chest palpitations. Patient states she weighs 600 pounds. Lives on the sixth floor apartment. And the elevator is broken. 158, the gun shot's right across the street. I can see you through the window. Yeah, ambulance 158, we're 10 8 2 0. Come on, Kato, let's roll. Well, thanks to our rocket-powered ambulance, we made it to the scene in no time. When you get to the scene, you find a 55-year-old female who about 30 minutes ago had a sudden onset of a fluttering in her chest, started to feel a little dizzy, um, and called the ambulance. So we have a 55-year-old female. As the team leader, you immediately start signing roles like you do in any code or any emergency. I want her on oxygen immediately because she's symptomatic. So we're going to start her on high-flow oxygen. I have another paramedic getting her connected to the monitor. Another paramedic is starting an IV. We get her hooked up to the monitor and we see this. A narrow complex tachycardia, rate of about 168. Her blood pressure is 110 over 70. Respiratory rate is 20. It's clear bilaterally. Room air SpO2 is 95%. Now she's symptomatic, but she's hemodynamically stable. She's not showing any serious signs of shock. So we got some wiggle room here. We got some time. Now, my partner's looking at the monitor, and he's debating, is this regular or irregular? He's really not sure. So before we move any forward, before we move forward, and since we have some time, we're going to do a 12-lead EKG and get a better look at this heart, see what's going on. The 12-lead shows an underlying atrial fibrillation. So what we have now is AFib with RVR. Now, this is a sudden onset. Patient said it started about 30 minutes ago and she has no history of AFib. Our drug of choice, Cardizem. 0.25 milligrams per kilogram over two minutes. Now, to better demonstrate the difference between regular and irregular rhythms, I want to slow down the AFib and let's take a look at that. Notice that when you're looking at a slower AFib rhythm, the R waves don't march out. The timing between the R waves is different. That's because it's not one foci firing, it's multiple foci within the atrium firing off, causing this quivering of the atrium. Because we have that and not one, uh, say the sinus node firing off, we don't have a P wave. There's no discernible P wave in this rhythm. P wave would normally be round, upright, and preceding a QRS complex. We don't have that. We have a quivering atrium and a ventricle that fires off intermittently, irregularly. My partner's starting to draw up the cardizem. The other paramedic keeps reassessing, reassessing, reassessing your patient. He now tells me that her blood pressure has dropped to 80. Patient starts to look pale. She starts to start falling off her chair. We help her down to the ground. Now that the patient has become hemodynamically unstable, she has altered mental status, her blood pressure has dropped, she's hypotensive, we're going to move immediately to synchronized cardioversion. Now the difference between regular and irregular narrow complex tachycardias and synchronized cardioversion is the amount of energy you use. For a regular SVT narrow complex tachycardia, the literature says you can start around 50 joules. For AFib with RVR, we're going to start at 200 joules synchronized. Fire it up to 200. Remember to set the defibrillator to defibrillation, set it to sync. And remember in sync, we're going to see those hash marks over the R waves. 
The monitor should say sync, and we should see those hash marks that lets us know that we're in synchronized cardioversion mode. So we've delivered the shock, and the patient converts to this. Still in AFib, but we have rate control now. You can see her rate is slowed down. Reassess her vital signs. Blood pressure is now 130 over 70. Heart rate has come down. Respiratory rate is still 20, clear bilaterally. Her mental status has improved. Her color has improved. We're going to continue the oxygen therapy. And in the literature, it often says consult experts. Get an expert consultation. Well, if you're in the field, your expert consultation is medical control. Call your resource hospital. In this case, they wanted us to start a cardizem drip at 5 milligrams per hour. So we started that. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You consult the expert. So remember, when assessing narrow complex tachycardias, first, is your patient stable or unstable? If they're unstable, immediate synchronized cardioversion. If they're stable, then you got some time, you got some wiggle room. Do further investigation. Get a 12 lead EKG. Get at somebody else's opinion. What's going on? Really identify what this rhythm is. If it's regular, irregular, pick the appropriate drug of choice. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and thank you for watching. Like a prize fight. Again, walking all over me at the end. Like I'm like I'm like, like, okay. Just throw me my my just throw me my piece of fish and let's keep going, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what was I talking about? What was it? <laughs> so the drug of choice for a narrow complex irregular tachycardia is the cars because the calcium just <laughs>